Hi to everybody uh, who's joined us today. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate uh, you guys being here and uh, hopefully I can share some insights about uh, my journey, our journey uh, uh, to how we created a UX team uh, at a large consulting firm. Uh, my name is Richard Alvarez. I lead the UX practice at Pexon. Um, and just a little bit about, about a Pexon. Uh, it's a consulting firm, a large uh, technology uh, digital uh, transformation consulting firm that's backed by Goldman Sachs. And that's no way a plug. It's really just a, a way of saying that um, this is a very large organization, roughly 6,000 employees across the globe. Um, and the vast majority of those people are technologists, delivery minded technologists, engineers, data folks, uh, PMs and product owners and scrum masters and everyone who understands everything about building software and delivering that software for our clients and in the sea of that uh, uh, world of technologists, there is our group, the UX team. Uh, we're a team of about 30 some folks around the globe. Half of us in our, are, are in India and half of us are across the US here. And we've got one member who's uh, uh, holding the fort down in, in the UK. Um, and we are uh, the human side of all things that we deliver. In fact, um, our tagline at Apexon is human first digital. And uh, I'm showing this slide just to show you my journey of how I got to Apexon and more importantly, how I got to UX. Um, but um, yeah, the tagline at Apexon is uh, human first digital. And it's something along the lines of we elevate the human experience through digital innovation. And I'm super proud of that tagline because of that human first digital uh, was inserted uh, only about a year ago. Um, and it's because of our group. Uh, we have always been surrounded. I have personally been always been surrounded by extremely smart people who know how to build things. And there is no that's no exception here at, at Apexon. Um, like I said, well over 6,000 people who know how to build things and know how to deliver things. Um, but we are the team that kind of asks uh, why, why are we building that? And it's that sort of passion of trying to figure out, you know, why are we building this? Um, you know, can we, can we find out what problems we're trying to solve before we just go to and, and start delivering on something uh, when everything in, uh, in, in the delivery model says, do not interrupt this, this deadline. Uh, do not interrupt these budgets. Do not interrupt any of these uh, uh, plans that we have made to deliver this product or whatever that might be. Um, and then there's this team of UXers who are telling us that we should maybe take a pause and really talk to our users and understand, you know, what problems they're facing first before we go into actual and uh, build uh, part of it. Um, it took a while for us to get there. Um, I'm sharing my story with you here because I wanted to show you that uh, I am not um, unlike many people who have come into UX. Um, it, we came in through the scenic route. Uh, I'm going to really date myself here. I graduated in 1991 with a uh, uh, bachelor's degree in English and communications and a minor in Spanish literature. I had every intention of becoming a storyteller, a writer, um, and somehow I got uh, uh, hired at Microsoft and fell in love with the digital technology and kind of made my way back to um, you know, building software and, uh, and, and, and working in, in some capacity with developers, technologists, um, and always, always being associated with the design community. Um, in many ways, I think that uh, I've always had that affinity for the creative process. Um, and a blend of how that creative process happens um, in in particular in storytelling, in the digital storytelling. Um, so this journey of mine here, um, I think, helped to inspire me with ideas of how we can build a UX team. Um, but it really isn't about my story. It's about uh, our story uh, of a team of people that uh, really had very similar types of backgrounds from diverse sort of um, uh, uh, different companies and organizations and things that they were doing in their past lives, uh, but always had this very common idea of let's talk to our users and understand, you know, what they're facing before we start building anything. <laughs> uh, yep, we're the same age. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, so along the way, the things that I really wanted to point out here are 
uh, the things that I really learned and picked up that helped to kind of inspire me with these ideas. Uh, and then I'll tell you the story of what we did when we actually started putting this into, into play at Apexon. Back then it was called Segeza. So just for a little uh, background information, I joined Segeza uh, in 2016 as a front-end developer. And, um, and uh, since then, uh, our company has been uh, uh, acquired and merged with all these other companies uh, at the very top, it's Goldman Sachs. Today we're doing business as a Pexon, but it's really the joining of a, a, a four or five different other companies that have been put together um, and now we're a Pexon. So uh, in 20, May of 2016, that's when I first joined Segeza. And maybe a year later, after working on a couple of different projects, I was enlightened with this idea of UX. Uh, there was a gentleman who still works with us today who graduated also from DePaul with an HCI and was telling me about all these ideas uh, around uh, the design process, uh, double diamond and design thinking, um, you know, actually talking to users, uh, putting something in the, in, into uh, a prototype and testing, validating it. All of these ideas were just super inspirational for me about software development. I kind of knew them and we were doing them before. Um, all along my ride here, the things that I had learned uh, about storytelling and hustling to pay for school and be becoming inclusive, all those things were incorporated into these ideas of user experience uh, at the very beginning. And just conversations that I was having with my colleague uh, really inspired us to say, we should do something about that here at our organization because the project that we were working on, um, let's move on to the next screen. The project that we were working on was made so much better because of these ideas. Uh, we were a technology company and we delivered products and customers were very happy with that, but old school thinking, there was just a design team there who was creating assets for, you know, wireframes and, you know, digital assets for delivery. Uh, all of the different uh, uh, elements that go into building an app or deploying a website or whatever the application or service might be, digital service might be. Um, and uh, we experienced a lot of the same things that I think uh, that were common to, to all of us. I, I always tell people the story of back when I first started at Microsoft, I recall clearly uh, deploying uh, software with hundreds of thousands of bugs. Um, and that was fine. We fixed the ones that were crashing the software, but other things, we took note of them and we said, we'll get that in version two. It was a very different world back then. And I think a lot of companies sort of experienced software development and delivery in that model of, we will get it in our next iteration of, uh, you know, where we can improve and how we can do that. And this design process that uh, really was something that was, uh, at least for me, brand new, was like, wait a minute, we can actually do this before we actually build anything uh, and, and, and cut the costs, cut the redundancies, cut the, uh, start involving other people uh, and, and, and doing something in a process that allows us to build the right things and, and not just anything. Uh, it's a story I wanna tell you today is how that happened. And it really starts with something very common to UX, uh, empathy understanding our users and, and and understanding where their pain points are. So how we built our culture, how we built our community of UX within this sea of, of delivery focused minded uh, technologists uh, was about understanding who we were, what our goals were, what we wanted to do as, as a practice. It didn't start out that way. Uh, it started out with uh, conversations uh, about how we can make improvements. And I was very lucky to be uh, in, to, uh, engaged with this project where the project uh, manager, in, in this case, was saying that they were open to all kinds of ideas. Uh, so myself and my colleague sharing these conversations, thought about different ways that we might make improvements to the things that we were doing. Um, back then, I didn't know the correct terminology of uh, UX, uh, you know, um, activities and, and deliverables. And we did different things uh, that I know now, I'm like, oh, that's called a design sprint or that's called a design system. Back then, we just called them a sequester because we thought, okay, let's just get everybody in the room, cancel all your meetings, put your phones away. We're gonna hash this out today or this week. Uh, we're gonna focus on and talk to our users. Let's go actually go out there 
a lot of the software we were building was for internal users. Let's go there, watch them do what they do, maybe ask them some questions and find out why they're doing the things that they do. Not applying any of our UX vocabulary to that, um, but in including everyone on our product team. Let's get in sync. Why are they doing this? How are they doing this? How do we make their lives easier um, and, and, and make them part of this conversation as well? So in those early days when we were doing these things, and just call it whenever we wanted to call them, I remember describing our design system as Lego bricks. You know, like, oh, we'll just create these Lego bricks that you can construct into anything and reuse them. Um, of course, nowadays, I know that's a, that's a design system. Um, or we did this rapid prototype, and we had a completely different name for that. And I think those early days really helped to build this sort of community and, and, and like-mindedness of we're not trying to dictate, we're not trying to show you it's got to be done our way or there is this better way and you're doing it all wrong. It was, we're all in this together. We really want to build the very best products. We can, we can all kind of uh, align ourselves on, on doing some of these things uh, that might be helpful to us building better software, uh, better, better things that our customers actually want. Um, so that's the, the part that I really want to share with you today is that culture of the UX of UX of how did we incorporate some of those ideas into helping to build the practice that we had. So in the beginning, those conversations turned into best practices um, in our project. We saw the successes and then we started sharing that with other project teams. These are things that we were doing that were really helpful to us uh, from design sprints to rapid prototyping to Check, talking to users and doing some observation uh, of what they were what they're doing, maybe talking to them and interviewing them. Uh, all of these ideas were sort of documented and shared across the team. And then we had we started having these ideas about uh, maybe we can offer this up as a service to our to our clients. Um, oops, let's go back over here for one sec. Uh, so we started thinking about maybe this is actually something that we can offer up as um, um, a services to our clients. Uh, and when we talked to the leadership team, um, they were very hesitant and th they told us that, you know, starting a practice means more than just uh, best practices. There's the business side of things. Uh, and then there's a the whole marketing side of things that we needed to consider. Um, and so they gave us a lot of uh, sort of KPIs to, to um, um, shoot for goals. You know, can you reach this revenue target? Can you uh, maybe work with our marketing team and get the word out so that we can start building a pipeline? Can you attract, you know, um, uh, a pool of talent that you can start deploying and, and allocate to, you know, possible projects if you start building the business side of things? Um, all true. And, and and what we learned in those early days was that yes, there's the business side of it, working with uh, other people in in the uh, in the company. Um, vertical leaders, uh, client account leaders, practice leaders, engineering, uh, data testing and automation, our Salesforce practice leaders to help understand the needs of how they deliver their product and how UX could uh, bring value to their uh, delivery models and, and to their conversations with their clients. We needed to be subject matter experts in business development, early pitches, and in those presentations so that we could win business. We needed to work with our delivery teams once the projects were uh, secured uh, and, and ensure that there was success there. Uh, we needed to educate our, our teams, and not just the UX team, but everyone within the company of why we were doing this and what we could do and where we might be, be more inclusive and uh, bring these values across the entire company. Uh, some of that was just, you know, Lunch and learn. Some of those are presentations that we do in, on particular activities, uh, different deliverables, um, and it's an ongoing uh, conversation that we're constantly having. Uh, there's the whole project scoping. What is it going to take? What do we need? How do we source this? What does it cost? How long will it take? Um, and uh, all of those pre-sales uh, collateral materials that are needed to, uh, you know, white papers and case studies and uh, our, 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 our proof of concepts. Um, Lots of things that go into the business developments. Okay, we'll check those boxes and we will uh, focus on putting those materials together. Then the marketing side of things, working closely with a marketing team to put the thought leadership together and a point of view. 
There's a lot of different areas that we could focus in on, on, on UX. We could be very general and say, hey, whatever you want to do, client, we were happy to do that. Uh, but we thought it would be strong for us to take a position and say, where do we excel and what are the things that we really want to differentiate ourselves with? And so having that point of view is something very important. And then becoming thought leaders, writing blogs, articles, uh, speaking at conferences like this, uh, and, and social media engagement, just to get the word out, we do this. You know, we understand this. We engage with our customers and uh, engage in the conversation of not just sharing information, but learning from from the from from the uh, the community itself. Um, and then there's the heart of really this talk, uh, the practice building itself, planning and setting a vision uh, for what we do and how we do it, uh, staffing. Um, and a, a big part of staffing is, you know, the recruitment process, the interview process, the evaluation of those uh, potential teammates. And then once they're, um, you know, accepted the offer, onboarding them and welcoming them into our culture, but also educating them about what we do and how we do it uh, and, and where they can start adding value. There's a continuous employee growth. Uh, and, you know, part of that is uh, um, based on performance, but a lot of it is based on real conversations and getting to know people and you know um, going beyond just the skill sets and 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 their domain knowledge but uh, understanding them as, as as human beings and and what their goals are and what their situation is in in life you know where they are on their journey uh, in terms of uh, you know starting off in your career or buying your first home or dealing with children at home or in my case, dealing with kids who are uh, just about to leave, you know, the empty nest and, and leave um, because, you know, they're graduating from college. So at any stage of, of your life, um, we want to be a partner with you, too, and we want to understand what else is going on in your life so that, you know, we we can incorporate the very best of what you can bring and give you back that as well um, from, from us, from all of us. Um, Part of that also is conflict re resolution, um, putting out lots of little fires and, and not waiting for them to turn into, uh, you know, uh, three alarm fires, but maybe checking in every now and then, giving people the autonomy and, 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 and letting them do their thing, but also building a support system so that, you know, we can catch those embers before they turn and spark into actual flames uh, so that people know that there's some place they can go to. And sometimes that just means venting and and here you know uh, lending an ear um there's all kinds of hr issues questions concerns you know goals that people set for themselves and uh financial uh and budgeting um considerations to consider and then at the very end uh, i talked a little bit about it uh throughout all these different buckets is uh advocacy for ux Ad advocacy within our own team uh, but advocacy within our own organization, and then advocacy out into the uh, the world of uh, of UX, and, and again, it's a give and take. It's learning, and it's sharing, and it's growing. So, all of these different things, all of the stuff that I talked about, the business side, the marketing side, uh, but most importantly, that that practice building stuff came from these early days. Uh, like I said. Uh, came to ideas with uh, the leadership team. They put out some KPIs and lucky for us, uh, took about six months. I thought those six months were going to be any day now, I'm gonna get fired because I'm not really doing anything besides trying to find an opportunity, but we were lucky enough to find one. Um, and it meant that we would have to travel. This is all pre pandemic days. Um, and so in order to save cost, uh, we would drive and it was myself, my colleague, and we had hired one person on the three of us would drive from Chicago to St. Louis where the client was uh, every other week. Uh, we would go down there and uh, it's about a five hour, five hour drive. This is a snapshot and there's like middle of the day, but at any given time it could go five hours. Or it could be six hours depending on on the traffic or the time of day. But those six hours uh, were very important to us. Um, number one, they gave us so much of an opportunity for us to bond, uh, to share ideas, to support each other, to listen to each other, um, but really put these ideas into place. What are the skills that we need? How do we get stronger in what we do uh, to get to the next level for this project or for what we see coming up in the future as we start building this pipeline? How do we find you know, our UX offerings? How do we go back to the differentiator? How do we cut across and say, we can do a lot of these different things, but we really want to hone in on and specialize on, on one or two things or whatever that might mean. 
Um, and, and what is our point of view? What is it about us? What is it about our team? What is it about our company that we want to say this is what we specialize in? Uh, and then most importantly, how do we continue to build this culture and this passion for UX that the three of us had and extend this to a much larger team? Um, five hour trips back and forth, 10 hours, gives us a lot of time to plan, to think, to listen, uh, and just to become friends. Uh, I think the big takeaway from this is that uh, building a culture, building a community is more than just skills. and It's more than just domain knowledge and experience. It's, do I trust this person? Can I, can I uh, uh, be proud of the work that we do together? Can I, can I back this person up? Will they back me up? Will they, will, they understand the issues that I'm going through. Can they give me the advice when I need it? Or just listen, if that's the only thing that I, that I need at the, at the moment. Uh, we had a lot of time to think. And there was a lot of stuff that was uh, tough for us at the beginning. Uh, you know, we had um, stress levels about, you know, building a pipeline and could we do this and planning for this. And uh, one of us had to do a lot of the, uh, you know, business side of things. Another one had to work with uh, the marketing side of things. and 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 then all three of us had to work on the delivery of one single project. Um, and it, I hate to call it a make or break project, but it really was a sort of a, a test for ourselves. Could we do this? Is this actually what we want to do? Um, and can we replicate this model if it is successful for us? Um, and so um, what came out of that uh, was success for us uh, and did lead to uh, uh, additional projects and pipelines. And I was able to particularly for me, remove myself from the project and start focusing on um, uh, more of a, the leadership role so that we can start building a team around us. But like I said, it, it is a, a back and forth and it's a never ending story for us. Um, we did have a vision and this is every year we come together as a team. We started with three people. Today we're more than 30 people, uh, but every year we do have the same sort of uh, check you know, retro or, you know, kind of a let's figure out what are we doing right and what are we doing wrong and are we still in line? Are we still in sync with how we want to do this? So that's our vision. Uh, we clearly try to de uh, define our team values, what's important to us as, as individuals and what's important to us as a, as a practice. And so we define those things every single year. Um, we continue with defining, you know, what is it we do? I talked a little bit about uh, uh, finding our, our niche. Yes, we want to be able to say many things yes to our clients. And, and if we're comfortable enough to say no, that's not our strong point. This is what we do. Uh, for us, it, in the early days, the low-hanging fruit was working with this technologist, these delivery teams, and incorporating, figuring out how UX incorporates with ad, uh, Agile. Uh, that was the easy one for us. We do have a very strong data practice, and so we naturally moved from from agile integration into data visualization. Um, and then we started expanding from there. Um, start doing pure research and discovery sessions, workshops, uh, usability testing. Uh, we were able to start prioritizing those types of uh, research uh, methodologies and, and activities. Uh, but all along, these four factors were important to us. Always focus on people. It's not UX for us unless we're talking to users. So that's one of the, the big takeaways for us. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to try to call a UI project a UX project because if we're not talking to users, then it's a UI project, and we can fulfill that. We've got team members uh, and design teams who can help us with the pure design phase of a project. Um, if it's UX, we want to talk to users and we want to prioritize those experiences, and that means doing our research. That means having the insights and backing up whatever decisions we make with something that's pointing us in that direction secondary research, primary research that we do, um, um, guidelines uh, or, or, or regulations and, and uh, things that come from the domain itself uh, help us to point in the right direction so on how we prioritize those experience and form those designs. And then finally, uh, continuous improvement, uh, something that we take to heart that we're never going to uh, say we're done. We're never going to say that we're finished learning whatever it is we've, we've done, it's it's a work in progress for us. There's always a way to get better. How do we do it? Uh, we we put together our, our philosophy of the how by taking these three steps that lead to the UX roadmap. First, 
understand the business, understand the domain, ask the right questions so that we are um, um, as close to possible as becoming uh, ingrained in their culture as well. Um, we put our teams together and in many cases, um, we build teams around that domain, specifically banking and financial or healthcare are two of our biggest verticals. And so a lot of the work that we do comes with that domain knowledge um, and uh, uh, the expertise uh, from our team members, but also from, from the domain. So we really wanna embed ourselves in those environments and really uh, understand how they do their work, why they do their work, what's the culture there, what's the frameworks they use, who are the people they're talking to. And then obviously we want to understand our audience. And so we're asking a lot of questions to understand, you know, who these people are, why they do what they do. Uh, and then both of those things together, we'll start looking at what the current state looks like. So this is our guiding lines uh, that help us to achieve what the UX roadmap will look like and help us to put those ideas together so that for every particular engagement, we can start putting a roadmap of exactly the kind of activities and deliverables that we will bring uh, to those projects. Um, this is where we do it. Um, so um, we think of things in terms of uh, a discovery stage and a delivery stage. Like I said, if many of our cases, many of our projects are defined as uh, as a UX project, but after taking a closer look, we know that this is not necessarily uh, UX. And we know that because there's no engagement with actual customers and what they're looking for is uh, wireframes or, or UI work. Um, and so we can put that in the bucket of, of the delivery. Um, but the discovery side, uh, there is UX work involved in the delivery as well. Um, but from the design side, we might say it's UI work. Um, but from a UX standpoint, yes, we will cover all of these different things in discovery and delivery, and then cut across on everything design. Really what it breaks down to is on the discovery side, uh, we're trying to build that empathy with our, with our customers, with our users. And on the delivery side, we're trying to uh, streamline whatever the process is so that we can deliver these assets to our uh, uh, colleagues uh, in, 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 uh, in the developer handoff to, to deploy these products. And then cutting across everything design, uh, that's where we can distinguish between you know, the UI work and the UX work across the entire project from discovery to delivery and post delivery uh, so that we can uh, continuously look for those enhancements, those improvements, those ways that we can make these products better. Uh, but that's the where. Uh, and then finally, I wanna go to the, the nuts and bolts of like how we did what we were doing when we were building our, 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 our culture. And again, I, I wanna, uh, emphasize here that it's by no, way, no means done. It's not uh, something that a story that I'm sharing with you with a period at the end, it's a work in progress. We're constantly looking for ways to get better, uh, but there's things and lessons that we learned from those early days and those car rides uh, that helped us to kind of define how we build our culture. The number one point I think for us is uh, uh, cross-functional collaboration. Um, I know you might have heard that ac across many of the different sessions today, but I can't stress how important this is. There's no value in doing what we do in a bubble. Uh, if we do this in secret or if we do this on our own and say, this is the secret sauce, you're not involved in this, we're really doing ourselves a disservice. Uh, we really wanna showcase what we can do. And that means working alongside all of our team members on the product team and including the customers, including the client, whatever it is we were doing, we want them to be part of it because we want them to see the value. Uh, and that means also being true to ourselves in terms of uh, estimations and the way uh, product teams think. Uh, so we wanna be able to not only speak our language, but we wanna be able to speak their language. And we like to pride ourselves in thinking that we can be fluent in both of those languages, work in a UX environment that allows us to bring those values, but also understand and, and, and communicate in that delivery model, that agile model of you know what they need and how they do their things in terms of estimation, in terms of the delivery uh, and the work that we do uh, so that it's visible to them as well. Um, so a lot of this means, I think for us, it comes from those early days of not really knowing, uh, I'm speaking for myself uh, in particular here, of what the UX terminology was and just kind of going with it and understanding that let's just, do something, let's just try something. Uh, let's get these people involved. Let's get all of our team members aligned on, we wanna build the very best product. 
let's give this a shot. Let's try to talk to our users. Let's try to understand what's wrong with the problem, with well, let those problems surface and then fix those things and make them part of it from whatever activity that we might be doing. Um, next uh, is providing support. Um, and this has been a, a real um, you know, year after year. It, there's improvements for us. We've only been doing this for, for four years. Um, you know, we've gone from a team of, like I said, uh, early days, a team of two, then three uh, for about a year. And then we've sort of went from three to 10 in year two. Uh, and then they started coming together, putting the teams together to where we are today, uh, over 30 people. Um, and, and a lot of those things helped us to define how do we build that support system around, around our, our colleagues. Um, it starts at the recruitment level. It starts with understanding who do we want on our team. Uh, I talked a lot about those car rides and having that support system um, of building a culture of support and, in, 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 you know, um, I know what you're going through and, and I can help you or I can listen or I can give you feedback, uh, whatever it might mean that can help to support uh, what we're doing uh, and, and achieve those goals as a team, as individuals. Um, uh, we learned from that and we wanted to incorporate that into everything that we do. So as we started to recruit people, uh, we built that into our, our interviewing system. Can we identify empathy? Uh, can we identify where someone isn't um, um, so stuck in one thought process that they're not open to another one? We have um, uh, people who, Colin, you're on the call. You interviewed with us one time. I don't know if you remember one of our questions, but people always come back to us and they and they always kind of uh, bring that up. But one of our questions is, um, uh, how do you how do you feel about zoos? Um, we really want to hear people's uh, opinions about you know their, their thoughts on the zoos. And there's no wrong or right answer here. You know, there's there's a, a case for supporting zoos and the um, uh, education and advocacy of conservation and uh, and uh, understanding uh, ecologies and, and, and animal um, biologies and, and things of this nature that's important uh, for people like me in Chicago who will never have a chance to really have, maybe I will, I'm hopefully one of these days go on safari, but really live and understand um, different environments, different ecosystems outside of an urban area. Um, but then there's also the other side of, you know, animals belong in cages or the, you know, uh, people or animals should should have live in natural habitat. So there's strong cases for both of these. And in our interview, we really want to hear that. We really want to understand that people are have the capacity to to see both sides um, and, 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 and not operate in, in, a, in a single zone, um, but look at it from all different angles. Um, we want to understand how they uh, how they think of success, how they think of and, and what their passion is for constant learning for constantly improving. Um, all that starts in, in that interview process. Um, and it is more than just, you know, understanding what they know in Figma or, you know, experiences that they had in, in, a, in a past job. Uh, we want to understand uh, them as a teammate and them as a, as a colleague, as, as a supporter. And we don't want a clone. We don't want another one of us. We want someone who's like-minded, uh, but someone who can challenge us and help us to grow. Um, so, there's the interviewing process, the recruitment process, uh, but then once they're on, uh, they've accepted an offer, there's a whole onboarding process. Uh, that's the screen I'm sharing here and it's constantly being improved. We've got a five day version of this in, in the best case, we can spend a week and onboard folks into you know, who we are, what we've done, how we've done it, you know, and, and more importantly, the project that they're going to be engaged in. I talked a lot about having that domain knowledge, spending time to, to really understand the business. Um, many cases, they've come from that business world, but really understanding this particular case for this engagement uh, is super important to us. Um, we've got a, a four day, three day, two day, and a one day version if, if there are cases where someone, um, you know, they couldn't start until one day before their project starts and whatever it might mean, we definitely want to make sure that we do certain things and get them onboarded properly. Um, in addition to that, there's a whole uh, you know, lifespan of, of learning and growing. And for us as individuals, we really wanted to understand where our teammates are in their UX journey. And so we put together a lot of different um, um, assets for ourselves to understand uh, what our career ladder looks like, what we're expecting, and more importantly, aligning people to where they are in that journey and how do they get to that next level. 
Um, so these are just some of the examples of uh, support uh, documentation that we put together in our career ladder so that people not just not only know where they are, what they should know at that certain level, but again, more importantly, how do I achieve the next level? What is it responsibility wise, soft skills and hard skills that I need to achieve uh, to get to that next level? Well, we've also uh, are very transparent in the way we uh, build our pipeline. Um, we don't want this to be, you know, decisions made at the at, at the C-suite or at the, you know, my level as, as a practice lead. I want all of us to be engaged, uh, all of us as a team to understand who we're going after, how we pitch, how we put the proposals together, how it's going to be fulfilled. And then, um, and then uh, um, uh, a view of what's going on in our company right now. Uh, so we always show people the, the companies we're talking to and where we are in any stage of that business development. It's a conversation. It's a proposal. It's an SOW. It's signed and we're engaged. And here's where people are allocated. And here's potentially what's coming up next month or a couple months ahead uh, so that people can uh, not only uh, participate in these conversations, but actually get involved. That sounds interesting. I want to know more about that. Consider me for that role. Um, so at any point, people are aware of what's going on within our organization and in our practice. That's super important to us. On a weekly basis, uh, I talked about having a, just a sounding board. Uh, yes, we do design critiques, and each project has their own sort of model for that. Um, sometimes it's, it's operated on the client side because we're working closely with another UX team that's in, in, in within the organization. But for ourselves as a as a as a um, as a company, we want to make sure that we have those um those uh, uh channels as well. So if we if we need to do design reviews, we can do that in a more generic sense of what's working, what's not working, or approaches that I've taken. Um, most of those are in the in the retro stages, not the ongoing stages, because uh, like I said, most of those are happening on the engagements themselves. But on a weekly basis, we do have weekly meetings and we do have a chance for everyone to kind of list what's going right and what's going wrong and just look for those numbers, look for things that are not necessarily happening uh, the ideal way. And it's not just it's not just about the projects themselves. Uh, we definitely want to, we don't want to butt into people's personal lives, but we do want to understand what else is going on in their lives. And so that we can appropriately uh, uh, um, support them. You know, sometimes it is very private and, you know, but we can sense that there's some time that I need for myself. Uh, sometimes I need to clear my head. Sometimes I need to spend with my family or a loved one or whatever the situation might be that's outside of the project world. And we have outlets for that. We we want to make sure that those, there's a channel for communication. There's a channel for uh, support, um, either with uh, us at, at, the, at the leadership level or within the, the organization itself. So there is no... There is no um, uh, limitation to who you can contact or who you're able to speak to. Uh, all doors are open and, and, and all, all, all things in terms of what's going on within the organization in terms of the business projects, uh, that's always exposed to everyone so that people understand where, where the priorities might be. Um, we also have an active uh, book club. I definitely uh, really appreciate this because uh, many times we're stuck within our own uh, sort of engagements and some of these things have been going on for four years now. Um, and so you're kind of stuck into this, uh, uh, I don't want to call it a rut, but uh, a mindset of this is how we do things on this particular project. Uh, and these are the frameworks we're using. And you kind of lose touch of what else is out there. So I think the book club is a one way that allows us to kind of go beyond our own projects, our own company, our own culture to see what else is going on? What else is happening in our industry? And we can talk about those things as a team. And of course, we have a, a mentorship program um, so that th that open door communication can happen um, at all times. People know that, yes, there is an open door. There is a, an opportunity for us to share and uh, um, uh, understand you know, where you are, what's going right, what's going wrong. But you'll always have someone you're paired up with that you can go to. Um, and, and sometimes that gets flopped around, uh, you know, after a year, uh, that program is sort of revisited and, and saying, is this working? Do you want to switch with someone else? Um, um, it's been it's been a learning curve. All of these things, I, again, are, are not perfect. They're, they're works in progress and they're things that we try. Um, and, and sometimes they have a shelf life. Uh, there's things that we've done in the past that 
worked to some extent and then they didn't work so much and so we moved on from them uh, i think the one of the most important things that we embrace as as a team is that uh we've reset the idea of what it means to to try something um i was very lucky in in those early days to be on those projects where we were in 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 an environment that said go ahead try it uh and if it doesn't go well it doesn't go exactly as planned um, we're not going to take harsh consequences. We're going to learn from it. We're going to get better at it. Uh, that's why we do this. And it really is a, a, a very much in line with the UX process. Try something and validate it. Uh, check this out and see if it works. And if it does, keep those things that work. And if it doesn't, maybe you tweak it or maybe you scrap it. Uh, but we're always learning. And I'll finally leave you. Uh, I've been going kind of rambling on here and I, I apologize for that, but uh, I definitely want to get a lot of these things across. Uh, I really love this 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 uh, line from uh, famous painter Paul Cezanne. Uh, we live in a world uh, in a, a rainbow of chaos. I, I really like that quote. I wanted to incorporate it in here. Um, every day is not the same day. In my past life, I worked at organizations where um, I, it got a little static and it got a little mundane and it got to be, you know, every day was the same day. Uh, and I had something on my wall for the longest time that said that if today feels like yesterday, you're doing something wrong. And it was the reason I left and came to, to um, at the time, Segeza, uh, because I wanted something different. I really wanted to challenge myself um, personally. Uh, at the time, I was running my own uh, sort of interactive studio. I worked with uh, three colleagues. And we did that for about 10 years. Um, it was fun. It was a, it was a blast and uh, taught me a lot, uh, but it felt very much the same every single day was almost uh, a cookie cutter of what we were doing the day before um and i can tell you that this world is completely upside down every day there's a new priority every day there's a new challenge uh maybe that's just uh, the nature of consulting uh but it's definitely the nature of building a practice there's always always uh some form of chaos uh on the business side budgets and, and constraints and, and benches and, and allocations. Uh, not every project is going to be perfect. In fact, none of them are. Uh, some of them are better than others and some of them are, are cause for major concern where you're just like, uh, I can't do this anymore. Um, but there, there's, there's always change and there's always an opportunity for, for growth and there's always opportunity for learning. It's, it's one of the things that I, I, I tell our, our, our team, team members uh, that uh, embrace the chaos, uh, enjoy the chaos, uh, because it's what we do as UXers. Uh, if everything was in, in order and, and, and working the right way, there wouldn't be a use for, for a UX uh, to come in and evaluate how to, how to uh, um, make it even, uh, you know, change things up. Yes, we want to make things better. I, I almost said we don't want to make it better, but we do. We definitely want to make it better. But it's when things are not going right that there's really use for UX in that in case. Understanding of what we do and how we do it so that we can make it better starts from this, this world of chaos. Uh, and I think that that is sort of the microcosm that we live in. Uh, in, in, in forming this UX practice. Uh, and if we didn't enjoy it, if we didn't really um, like working with different people, understanding where, where they're coming from, understanding the problems that they're facing and enjoy how do we make this better? How do I work with other people? How do I bring value into this mess of, of different things that are happening all at the same time? Um, um, we might be in the wrong business, I think. Uh, I, I feel like that is an important part of what we want to build for our culture. Uh, don't be afraid of it. Don't uh, don't be scared of, the, of that chaos and, and, and start by, by saying to all of my colleagues, uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, all of this is, is, a, is a, an opportunity for us for growth. And one way or the other, the, the, best, the best success that I, I can give to my colleagues who work that I've been lucky enough to work with in these last four years is that we built this. We know the, the problems and, 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 the, uh, and the achievements, um, the success stories that we've, we've come to, and even the, the not so successful stories, we own all of that. Uh, that is ours on our story to tell. It's not mine. It's ours as a team. Um, we came in. We saw some uh, opportunity for us to bring UX to a world of, of delivery. Uh, and, and so far, so good. Um, but it is a, a success story and one that we can be very proud of that we were able to take a chance, try something, 
and use the UX process to help us understand how us as individuals can uh, bring value to not just our projects, but to our teams. Um, so I'll leave you with that. Uh, I wanted to leave more time for questions. I think I've been rambling on for quite a few, but hopefully if you guys have some questions, I'm very happy to, to answer some of those. And, and thank you so much for, for listening to me. What an amazing journey, Richard. Thank you so much for sharing and in detail with all the steps and everything you went through along the way. That's remarkable. Uh, interestingly enough, one of the books that you featured in the previous slide, Ruined by Design, was featured in this conference a couple of hours ago in the book club. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, I attended that session. It was awesome. Oh, you did? Oh, great. Awesome. Okay. Um, I think we have time for maybe a question or two. Uh, Teresa has a question here. You mentioned a culture where in the earlier days of trying things and being okay with it, even if it didn't work, since it was a learning opportunity. I'm curious at what point did that mentality go away or change? And what were the factors that went into that decision? That's a great question. I think it has not gone away for our practice. And for our practice, I think our team has made it very important to us to keep ourselves in that mindset. Uh, it's difficult and it's hard because the mindset has, it's the biggest thing that we do as a, as a team is advocate for UX within our team and within our, our, our company. And in many ways, that is uh, an ongoing, never ending struggle, I suppose, for us uh, of, under, of uh, allowing team members to understand that um, it's okay to fail. Uh, it's okay to try things. Um, we embrace that within our culture. And if we describe that in other ways, innovation, uh, it, it helps uh, other team members to, to see that. I think so many people are, are, are fixated on the delivery model of all of that's happened already. We just got to reach the finish line. How do we incorporate that mindset into the delivery model? Uh, that part is, is a, a tricky one. Um, Yes, they understand innovation. Yes, they can comprehend UX and the design process that, you know, that we believe in, our philosophy. Um, but when it comes to the actual uh, project itself, delivery, uh, it's a little harder for them to grasp those uh, those concepts. Um, so we do everything we can to, to uh, allow them to come on that journey with us. Uh, and we say to ourselves, and especially in those early days of, okay, what are we doing first? It's, it's agile and it's UX integration. Our, our first point was we are not going to disrupt the deadline. We are not going to cost any more money. We will, there's a good book out there called uh, Just Enough Research. I know many of you guys have read that. Uh, it was a guiding force for us. What is it that you'll give us? Give us two weeks, give us six months, give us two days. We will do whatever we can to provide insights. We call them early wins in those days because we weren't given anything. So we're, 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 we told ourselves, okay, if you're only going to give us a day, then we're going to use uh, ADA com compliance. We're going to use style guidelines. We're going to use design principles to help inform these designs. Uh, and if we start seeing those successes and in incorporating our team members into this is how this came about, it's not guesswork. They'll give us a little bit more of a leash. It's it's an ongoing conversation. It never ends. Um, and I don't want to call it a struggle because it's part of this chaos, um, but it's just one of those things that People change, different mindsets come and go. Um, and just when we see success, maybe we see two steps backwards, but uh, again, embrace the chaos, constantly advocate for UX. Thanks for that, Richard. We can we can go a little bit longer. Um, Colin has a question here. Uh, you mentioned education, advocation a bit. Do you have any advice for building a UX culture, a culture of fail, as you put it, into an organization that is risk averse? or in a risk-averse industry, or has risk-averse cultures who are unfamiliar with product thinking? Yep, yep, for sure. Um, we we need to educate ourselves as a team so that we're confident enough to try things. We don't want to try, uh, I don't want to say we. when we hire folks, I'll, I'll give you a, a good example. We've hired team members right out of college, um, and um, you know they're smart, they're, they're brilliant, they're they're passionate, um, uh, but they they don't have the confidence to um, um, talk back to a product owner, let's just say, uh, about why it's important. I'm just using it as an example. Why I want to build a prototype and validate that first before you know getting the results and just building something. So uh, how can I support that person? Uh, I want them to expose the risks. 
I want them to say, okay, if you are not going to let me validate these ideas, we've built a prototype, we've done some user testing, there's some results here, and you're telling me to move forward without any, you know, iterations or improvements that we can make on, on the findings. Um, I don't think that's correct. This is a, a this is a designer talking back to the product owner. Um, they don't have the, the the courage to stand up to them and they're saying uh, to, to do. I, I want them to feel confident to say, expose the risk. If we do this, this may happen. Um, whatever it might mean, but if we if we do it. We're going to improve this and, and we can find, you know, uh, 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 faster, cheaper, increase it, whatever the, the metrics might mean of pluses and then expose the risk for, for the minuses. Um, let them know that if, if, we, if they don't do that, the product owner still moves forward with that, uh, then we can back them up. Then we can say that it's okay to make these mistakes because we, we're going into it with uh, the information, the data that we need uh, to, to 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 allow them to make to say, I don't want to say it's a it's a risk that we're taking, it's a risk we're taking on the product side, but we want to back them up. We as a team, we want to say, uh, you can defend this. You can say right or wrong what you're going to do uh, on the product team. So on the on the UX team itself, sorry, I know people are leaving, but on the on the UX team itself, I don't want anyone to think that they can't make those mistakes. So there's a lot of things that we do, internal projects, uh, not the, the projects themselves, just internal things that we do to say, be, be bold, be brave, try something, and then defend it, then defend it, because then we can we can uh, help each other saying like, why why did you do that? You know, where did that come from? Uh, help us to build that defense system so that when in the real world we do this it's easy to support that that mentality i know why i'm doing this and here's the risk involved with with not doing that but build a build a, an environment that allows for that to happen that's great advice uh, richard i like that uh be bold be brave then defend it it's wonderful great thank you for that um any final questions before we head out um just a quick note, there is an interactive session coming up with Joe. Um, so th th that's a session where you, where anybody attending can switch on their audio and video and just join discussion. Um, it's a bit different from these ones where uh, attendees can only um, put their uh, comments in the chat. So upcoming session is interactive. Get ready to go on video and audio if you feel comfortable. If you'd like to join discussion, we'd appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate everyone's time today. Yeah, thank you, Richard, for, for all this information. It's, it's a wonderful experience, and thank you for sharing it with everybody. My pleasure. Thanks, Thanks everyone, for joining, and enjoy the upcoming two sessions, last two. Have a great day, everyone.